Esther says to you, I like my part. And what she means is, my part is to be happy. Maybe the hardest part of all, yes? Your part in this forum is to bring your preferences and desires in their poignant place to a forum like this where you project them and summon, as you always do, whether you are in a forum like this or not, Esther's part in this example is to be vibrationally up to speed with that which we are so that as you summon that which you want, it can flow through her. And that really is your part, too, in all of the creating that you do. So when Esther says, I like my part, and you laugh, what she is saying is, my part is not a hard part at face value. My part is just showing up in a happy, open-valved position so that what is being asked for can flow through me. But that means that she must position her mind on things that allow her to do that. And that's your work too, isn't it? And that's what the art of allowing is. It's living in the world that you live in, living in the conditions that you are living in, observing your life as you observe it, and training yourself to find vibrational alignment with who you are no matter what. So at face value, it is a simple thing. I just show up and be happy, and the seminar happens. That's what Esther would say to you. My part's easy. But like you, her part is the hardest part of all, because the art of allowing is the art of finding ways, some way, from where I am, no matter what's happening, to adjust my vibration to the alignment of that which is truly me. For a while we called this gathering the science of deliberate creation. Much heftier title, don't you think? But it was worrisome to so many because you worked too hard at it and you worked on the wrong things. Science of deliberate creation made you make lists and set goals and keep track of where you were in relationship to your goal. It caused you to be out of balance more often with what you wanted even than you were before. Because now you're paying more attention to your relationship with your goal. And as you're moving along, you know, more than 99% of every creation is complete before you see any physical evidence of it. And so you could be well along the way to the completion of things that you want. And when you stop to take score of what's manifested and you see nothing's manifested yet, you sort of freak out and lose your connection and change your vibrational output. And now you've shown up, but you're not ready. You are not practicing the art of allowing. The art of allowing says, I'm worthy. I'm good, I've already asked, and sources come into agreement with it, and now I just have to let it in. That's what the art of allowing is. The art of allowing says, I've set my radio dial on 6.30 a.m., so I will get the frequency broadcast that is being broadcast from the same tower of 6.30 a.m. The art of resistance says, I want to hear what's being broadcast on 6.30, but I've got my dial set on something else. I really want to hear what's coming through on 6.30 a.m. I heard it's good. I heard it's everything that I want to know and everything I want to be, do, or have, but I have got my frequency set on 7.30. Close. And why can't I hear what's being broadcast on 6.30? And we say, because your dial is not set on what you're asking for. This is a world that is based on vibration. And that's confusing to many of our human physical darling friends because you have become so good at interpreting vibration that you don't even know you're doing it. You interpret vibration with your eyes so you see. You interpret vibration with your ears so you hear. You interpret vibration with your nose so you smell, with your fingers so you feel, with your tongue so you taste. You are veritable vibrational interpreters. 
And the most significant, we're not kidding you, more important even than sight or sound, the most significant translating that you do is with your solar plexus. It's your energy center. It's your emotional center. The emotions that you feel are giving you feedback on your vibrational countenance. And that's a very important thing to be aware of because your vibrational countenance equals your point of attraction. And your point of attraction equals your life. It equals every moment of your life. The mix of vibrations within you is what life is. So it's important that you first of all recognize your emotions as important and don't discount them as unimportant. When you feel something, it matters. When you feel something, don't beat up on yourself for what you're feeling. Don't beat up on yourself for not feeling better. Instead, acknowledge that you feel that way for a reason, and it's an important reason, or you wouldn't be feeling it, you see. And next, decide that you will use this feedback effectively, beneficially for you. Now, how can you use your emotions in a beneficial way? Well, first, you have to understand what the premise of your emotions is, what makes them work the way they do. Jerry and Esther have navigational systems in their vehicles Magellan in some cases, Pioneer in other cases, OnStar in other cases, but they all operate on the same premise. And the premise is, we'll help you get from where you are to where you now want to be. That's it. Only those two factors. None of them ever say, where were you yesterday? None of them ever say, it's important that we trace your steps for the last week or so or month or so or lifetime or so before we can accurately calculate your next route, all of that is irrelevant. The only thing that matters is where are you in relationship to where you want to be? And your emotional guidance system is based upon exactly the same thing. Where are you in relationship to where you want to be? So there are two vibrational reference points that are playing off one another that give you that feedback. Magellan has computer inside the coach and antennas on the roof, satellites in the sky, so the system knows where they are right now. Then they program in their desired destination, and Magellan says, please proceed to the highlighted route. And as long as they are on the highlighted route, Magellan purrs along, sweet tones, all you hear. But if they deviate from the highlighted route, Magellan does her job. She kicks up a squawk. She says, please proceed to the highlighted route. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Lights flash. Please proceed to the highlighted route. Please proceed to the highlighted route. If they have diverted deliberately from the highlighted route, Jerry says, shut that broad up. <laughs> because she is determined to remind them of what they said they wanted. That's her job. And that's the job of your emotions, to remind you of what you said you wanted. Not what you said with your tongue. What you said as you sifted through the magnificent contrast that helped you in all sincerity, in all truth, in all honesty, in all clarity, conclude what you want. When you live something that is less than what you want, you emanate a desire that says, this is not what I want, what I want is this. And even if you do not speak words to it, don't you know that when you're sick, you want wellness in a profound way? Don't you know that when there's not enough money, that the desire for prosperity or an even flow of money is a strong, strong desire or preference that's formulating within you? And the thing that we most want you to know is that even if you could not speak a word like the beasts of your planet do not speak your languages, your moving through contrast, your day-to-day -day experience causes you to exude preferences. And the wonderful thing, the most wonderful thing, the thing that we don't think you know as much as we want you to know that happens is in the moment that that preference exudes out of you, whether it is a full-blown desire, whether it's something that you could write in your goal list, whether it's something that you're discussing with words or if it's something that's just happening on a visceral level within you, when that desire shoots out of you, it shoots like a rocket into the universe universal ethers and source says immediately, unequivocally, knowingly, and resourcefully, we agree with you. You know why source agrees with you? Because you are the leading edge of that which is source. And you ought to know. 
Even if you're the one-celled amoeba in the ocean, you know what's best for you from where you stand. So as that desire shoots out of you, source comes into complete agreement with it. And one point in that vibrational relativity has been established in your vibrational patterning. And now, do you see what's going to happen? Where you stand emotionally, vibrationally, in relationship to this point, now is what your emotions are all about. So let's say you've not got enough money and it is coming down around you in a very powerful way. Bills are piling up. You're feeling fearful about it. And in the middle of all of this contrasting experience, you're radiating rockets of desire. In fact, you've been doing it for a while. You didn't just now do it. You've been doing it. So there are a whole bunch of amended desires. The source has been saying, yes, we agree. 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 So there is a very strong, clear source energy perspective and agreement on what you are asking for. Did you hear what we just said? That's step one and step two of the creative process. Step one says, ask. Contrast causes you to ask even if you don't use words. Step two is, source answers your asking. That's what we're talking about when we say source comes into full and active, resourceful agreement with what you're asking for. In the moment that your contrast causes you to ask for something, source comes into full agreement with that. Step one and two have now been completed. And now your work is all that's left. And that is, you must become a vibrational match to that which you are asking for. So how do you go about that? You pay attention to the way you feel. The vibration within you, the emotion within you, is the indicator of the mix of vibrations. Now, what's one point of vibrational relativity? What you want and sources agreement with it. What's the other point of vibrational relativity? Where you stand in relationship to that. So you've already told the universe that you want more money and source is already in agreement and is lining up circumstances and events to accommodate you. But here you are complaining about not having enough money, talking to your friends about what you can't afford, nitpicking over dollars and whatever you're doing, feeling fearful or unhappy about dollars. Well, that negative emotion that you're feeling is your Magellan saying, please proceed to the highlighted route. Please proceed to the highlighted route. And like Jerry, sometimes you shout, shut those emotions up. In other words, I don't want to feel like this. And we say, yes, you do. You want to be able to feel your vibrational relationship. Otherwise, you have no way of knowing where you are on your journey from not enough money to enough money, from not enough wellness to enough wellness, from not enough happy relationships to enough happy relationships. In other words, if you can't feel where you are, then you can't quantify your journey and you can't take the steps in words, thoughts, and actions that align you to get you to the place that you want to be. Sometimes there are actions that you can take that will clean things up right away. Sometimes there are thoughts that will clean things up right away. Sometimes there are words that get things moving more in the correct position. But the thing that we most want you to hear is that if you are unaware that your emotions are help, then you're out there trying to guide yourself using a bunch of guidance that is coming from outside of you that has nothing to do with the only thing that matters, which are the two points of vibrational relativity. Nice to know, isn't it? It is wonderful to come together with those like you, powerful creators, powerful in your wanting, and coming more and more in every day to know that you deserve everything that you are asking for. We have enjoyed the shifting of energy that we have witnessed here today. We've enjoyed the personal sense that you are individually feeling. We feel it collectively, but we can feel it individually. We can feel you have made some decisions about your day-to-day -day directing of your thoughts. You know that you are the creator of your own reality. We know that you know that. And we know that you mostly like that idea. We can feel that you understand that you are extensions of source energy. And while you can't get a real sense of what that means, we know that you can feel when you're choosing thoughts that allow the fullness of who you are to shine through you in the moment. And we know that that is your ultimate quest at all times. In fact, every negative emotion that you feel is an awareness at some level that you're not allowing yourself to be who you really, really are. And nothing is more uncomfortable than not letting yourself be who you really, really are. 
But the message of this day has been, and will always continue to be, please make peace with where you are, because where you are is just fine. And from that willingness to accept the rightness of where you are, you can then find a softer, even better feeling thought that will take you closer and closer to who you really are. We speak to you as representation of that which is your inner being, your source. And we say to you, there is nothing that you have done or could do that would cause us to feel less than extraordinary appreciation and love for that which you are.